We're going to bless tonight. We thank God for everybody who's here tonight. We're going to discuss just a passage here um, and the second epistle of Paul, the apostle to Timothy. And verse, well, chapter one, verse six. We'll give you time to find that. I certainly want to give you time to find it now. Second Timothy one and six. It says, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Verse seven, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we'll stop there. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for allowing us to gather here in person and virtually. And so we give you glory because you're wonderful and great. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, we, uh, in order to understand this, you would know that there was a relationship between Paul and Timothy. Talk, Paul and Timothy were very much, they were close. Paul considered Timothy as one of his children. And as a matter of fact, he was Timothy's spiritual father. Now, you don't find many spiritual fathers. Spiritual fathers, to me, are those persons who are interested in the outcome, the, the success, a successful outcome of a person that they're fathering. It is a difference when you are saying that you are a spiritual father and you're looking for some monetary gain out of the person that you say that you're fathering. Uh, in normal cases, the children don't give the father money. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, not that the children won't, because if you love your parents, you do anything for them. And it is not motivated by fear when you give to them. It's motivated by love. And that is a difference. And so we have few fathers in the gospel, and, uh, you know, many that call themselves a father. Paul, indeed, was a father to Timothy. He wrote to him. Uh, as he was even dealing with his own situation, he wrote to him out of his own hurt. Uh, he was dealing with things. Paul had to deal with imprisonment because of uh, the word he was speaking. They hated his guts. And so even through all of that, he still spoke with Timothy. He sent the word to Timothy, and he told Timothy that uh, I, am, I want the gift of God to be stirred in you. And, and the word stir simply means uh, to, to cause the flame to blaze again in the scripture. Of course, it means different for some of us in, in the natural, but in that text, in that um, term to terms that Paul was uh, uh, stating or saying at this particular time, he was talking about igniting the flame. The only way I can, uh, one of the ways that I can compare this to is when I was a young lad. My grandfather would cut wood, and he had a wood uh, a heater uh, that kept the house warm. And he would go out and cut the wood, and every once in a while, as he would watch baseball, and overnight, he was a baseball guy, he watched baseball, the fire would get low. And he would take this thing as an iron, I don't know if you call it a poke iron or something, but he'd take this piece of iron, he'd go in there and he'd stir the fire. When he would stir the fire, the flames would blaze again and we would have heat again. The heat would die out. It wouldn't be, it wasn't the heat, uh, would die out. And the pressure, the, the heat from the flames would die out and go low. And so he'd have to poke it and hold it up he poke it and hold it up, then it would catch fire, and sometimes he'd put a new piece of wood on it to get the, get the blaze going because it would get to the point where it would start to turn into those small uh, wood chips. And, and so he would take that and, and, and stir the fire, and all of a sudden, it's, it's blazing again. 
and so that he was stirring uh, the fire. And that's what Paul was telling uh, uh, <clears throat> Timothy, to stir the fire, the gift of God that's in you. Sometimes we are, when we end ministry and we end the work of the Lord, we get, we get sidetracked and the fire goes out. But every once in a while, you have to go back to the first day that you were filled with the baptism, the precious power of the Holy Ghost, to when you were running and excited that God filled you uh, with his glory. And so we don't want to ever let anything uh, in our lives be more exciting than having that relationship with God. So it is when you are in personal relationship with uh, your, your, your family, your, particularly sometimes your spouse, every once in a while you gotta light the fire. You gotta do, you gotta come home with some roses and come home with some candy and whatever it takes to light the fire. I don't know what, what y'all come home with, but that's the norm. And you gotta light, you gotta do some stuff, you know. And, and, and then sometimes it's okay to celebrate yourself. Buy your own roses, pick your own, get your own vase. <laughs> And stick it in there and celebrate some things. Right. Clean the house better than you ever cleaned it before. You might respect it. Clean your room, I don't know, better than you had. Put some new covers, buy some new confidence, and, uh, repaint the wall. Throw away that rug you've been walking across with that hole in it. You know, get you a new, some, just stir up some stuff. You know, same thing with your car. You know, clean it, get some new smell good in there. Get it detailed, fully detailed. You might actually appreciate it. And so that's, and Paul was, was, was saying to Timothy, just stir up that gift that's in you. He said, when I laid hands on you, he said, that which we're about to put in the hands on you, he said, I want you to know that God has not given us the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of fear. That's not the spirit of God. Anytime you see somebody dealing in anxiety and fear, God says, that's not God's spirit, but he's given us power and that of love and of a sound mind. So we have to walk in love and self-discipline. Self-discipline says that you have the power to do certain things, but you rather not and you will not do them because you have self-discipline and you have love and you're rooted in God. So many times uh, people have discipline for as long as the 11 o'clock hour service last at church until church turn out. And then as soon as church turn out, they pick up that same language again. Yeah, they pick up the same language, that profanity, that those those words. They go get back in that same bed with that person they're not married to. They, yeah, mm -hmm. they go ahead and, and go to the party. And I've been to church, I gave God he is, and now it's time for mine. You know, so they, they pick up a life that's non-disciplinary, a life that does not center God. God has, you have to be willing to let God be in all of your business. That's right. Everything about you has to be, uh, you, you have to be Christ-centered. Everything, how you handle yourself. Even if an employer gets on your last nerve, you still have to come out and be godly because uh, the Bible says that God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. Yeah. And since we are children of God, we're to act as though, act as God's children. That yeah. means we don't act hellish because they're acting hellish. We have to stand and, and, and you know, do that's holy. That, that represents God's will. Now, I know it's difficult sometimes because you still got your mama's attitude. You still got a little street in you. You still got a little fight in you. And, uh, you want to go for something. You want to cut somebody. And you want to go to your purse and your trunk. I know that sometimes people push you to that point. They have you thinking those things. But you have to understand that that is limited power when you operate in your own selfish power. But when you operate in the power of God, God has unlimited power. Uh, I remember my aunt, who was one of my favorite aunts, was working for the school system, and a lady came in, was picking, trying to pick her apart in her classroom, just kept picking, kept picking at her, doing stuff to make her seem incompetent. She was an English teacher, 
by profession, an evangelist by night. That means she would preach for sometimes six weeks at a time with the revivals and dump one suitcase out, pick up another and go preach in revivals, which is my total desire in life. But she, so she would preach. Uh, and then, so this lady was a, an administrator, came in picking at her, arguing and keeping up messages. She said, she just said, instead of her getting in the flesh, she started to pray. And when she began to pray, uh, all of a sudden, folks showed up on the parking lot. And this lady car, I mean, they took a brick and burst the, window out of, the windows out of her car. You know that song, they burst the window. Yeah, they burst the windows out of her car. They stabbed her tires, all four flats. Vandalized her entire car. And the lady, and stuff just kept happening to her. And finally, the lady came to her and said, call them off. Call them off. I, I, I don't know who you call them. Call them off. I'm sorry for how I've been acting toward you. Call them off. She didn't do nothing but, but pray. And see, angels can fight better than you can. The Bible reminds us, tells us in the, in the book of Kings, I believe it's the 17th chapter, where God sent one angel to slew 185,000 men. One angel. Slew, took them out, they were the Assyrians, took them out, and the next morning, they woke up and they were walking over dead men's bodies. And so all you have to do is submit it to God. And, and you know, none of us in here have 185,000 problems, I don't think. I don't think you got 185,000. You may have 18, but not 185,000 problems. And God took care of all of those problems. Sometimes we're trying to fight and, and, and do stuff at our hands when God can fight better than you can. And so Paul tells Peter, uh, tells him, sorry, tells Timothy, uh, man, you know, stir up the gift that's in you. Use that power that's in you, Peter. Uh, Timothy, I keep saying Peter. That power that's in you, Timothy. Stir that up. Move in that power. See, sometimes, um, sometimes we have gifts. I would say all the time. God has gifted many of us, but we we lack the stirring of the gifts that's in us. We allow them to lie dormant. We allow them to sleep. Uh, it's like, for me, I can use myself as an example. I, 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 for a long time, did not want to necessarily operate prophetically. But ever since I've been a child, I've always dreamed prophetically. And as I got older, I would see things prophetically. And so I was in a service, came to a service one time, and I thought, I thought they were something else, but they were prophets, prophetess. And the lady stopped me, and she said, it's a good gift to have. I said, a good gift to have? What are you talking about? And she said, she said, if this man tell you that you got gold in your purse, you have it in your purse. He operates, and she asked me, can you go in your heavenly language? So I went in my heavenly language. Began to speak with other tongues that the Spirit gave others. Uh, and I can do that at any time. Some of you can, but I can. Uh, and so I have a gift. So I began to speak, and she said, you're a heavy, strong prophet. And, and I, 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 I will admit that there are times when I've dreamed my entire weekend. Everything that was going to happen, I saw it in a dream in all three days. I was going to uh, Pastor Judy Jacobs' church in Cleveland, Tennessee uh, that weekend and traveling with some friends down there to, for a conference. And I dreamed the entire weekend before we got went to Dr. Perry Stone's church, visit there, and then we went over to her church. And we, we, I was able to, uh, I saw everything. And I said, this is crazy. And then as I backtracked even further back, my wife had planned a surprise birthday party for me. And uh, they were all the way down to how they were getting the money, to how they had, had the chairs turned. I dreamed it. So I woke up on the bed and told her. And she had to hold her composure uh, to try to keep the surprise because I dreamed the surprise. Uh, so, uh, and then prophetically, I was saying, uh, things and talk to people. So the gift was there, but the gift, if you don't, what Paul was telling 
activity if you don't use it. I've heard Brian Carn said that he would practice on, on his kinfolk. And if you don't use it, uh, uh, you will, it will lie dormant. It's not that the gift is not there. Even with the gift of singing, with the gift of playing, uh, I can attest to that, that when you are a musician, if you don't practice, you will forget stuff because you, the gift lies dormant. You might not forget chords or some parts, but you don't play it to its highest level if you don't practice and move it. And so those gifts have to be stirred. Those gifts have to be used constantly. So you have to continue to use the gifts. So Paul tells Timothy, stir up the gifts. He says, wherefore I put in thee the remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. The gift of God that's in you, stir it up. We have a knack of tapping into our humanist to where we uh, get into the flesh of things. And once we get a little peak of a sun ray through the cloud, we say that's, that's our breakthrough and we stop. But I, I, I beg to differ tonight, you have to keep hammering away until that thing breaks loose, until everything dissipates, everything's removed. You have to keep praying until you see the full sun, not just the ray of the sun. And so we get pieces. We pray and God help us through a situation. And we forget that the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. And this is how we live. We live a life of prayer. We, we walk in that. This is the realm in which we walk in. We don't just do it uh, by happenstance. We got to stop uh, <clears throat> being so intimidated by situation, Mr. Noel Jones says, being intimidated by the situation rather than being led by revelation. And so we need to have uh, 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 the, the thought of what God, we need to think our way out of the thing and know that God has already brought us out of whatever situation it is. But you have to keep your mind there. And so this is why Paul has to remind Timothy that hey, the gift of God is in you by when I laid hands on you, in other words, and sometimes I see what Paul did, and this is me, I believe that Paul transferred an anointing to Timothy and say, now I know that you're gifted because I laid hands on you as a father and you have this gift and I need you to know that God has not given you, Timothy, the spirit of fear, but he has given you power, he's given you that of love and of a sound mind. And so we, sometimes we become timid we become fearful in our everyday life. We're intimidated by what's going on with us, what's happening in our house, what's happening with our loved ones, what's happening with what people are saying, what's going on all around us. And we put all this in a box and we try to figure out some therapeutic way of dealing with it. We, some people go to casinos, some people go get them a drink, some people uh, roll up stuff, yeah. and some people do, a, you know, Go book some a good hotel. Don't tell nobody their room number. Turn their phone off. You do all kinds of things to try and get away. But the true way to get away is to get in the spirit. And when you get in the spirit, you will find that you can defeat whatever the enemy is trying to bring your way. So you can't operate in fear, but you got to operate in the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit. And so this is what Paul is saying to Timothy. He talks to me. He says, I love you like a beloved son. I love you. I, I, I love you, man. And I just want you to know that I hear in my prayers day and day, day and night. I'm praying for you. But I need you to assume the posture. It does not, it's not enough for somebody to be praying for you. Even when we have our prayer times, it's not enough for just a prayer. Prayer is good, but then we have to put things into action. See, some people want to use prayer, preaching the word of God as therapy. It should be therapy. It should be, but it should not be therapy only. It should be something that's put in practice. Uh, and, you know, because some of us like getting fussed at. Because the, when people fuss at you, they're massaging your guilty conscience. And you feel better because you feel like you got a mental whipping. 
for what you've done that was wrong. And some of us even whip ourselves. And we bask in guilt. But as soon as the guilt is over, we go back and repeat the same thing. See? And so it, um, <laughs> it takes discipline to go, that's what Paul says, and self-discipline. It takes a sound, that sound mind, is, is sound mind simply means self-discipline. And so it, it, there has to be self-discipline. In other words, nobody's watching, nobody's looking, that's between you and God and the donut. <laughs> you know? And so this has to be self-discipline. I, I was watching the NBA, um, and I, I were actually a real of uh, Dwayne Wade, who retired uh, as a basketball player for Miami Heat, who retired at 37. He retired at 37, but LeBron's, I believe, is 38, 39, and still playing. And he said that he watched what LeBron puts in his body. He said the reason why he's outlasting all of the other athletes is because what he chooses to eat, how he chooses to take care of himself. And now the rest of us are doing that. We're getting pouches and dad bods. But <laughs> LeBron is taking care of himself so that he can last. And so he said, God has given LeBron everything but a hairline. I'm just kidding. But that's, that's, that was, that's, you know. Um, uh, so he's, he's taking care of his physical body so he's outlasting. So, so it is with us in the spirit. The reason why some people seem to be tougher than you is because they pray more than you. They seek God more than you. See, uh, Dr. Jamal Bryant said that he went to Africa. And when he went to Africa, the African prophets were working and preachers were working miracles. Like, I mean, yeah, I've seen where they work miracles, they lay hands and the miracle money would show up and folk would count. Y'all not liking this tonight, that's okay. Miracle money showed the account, folks. Uh, uh, FICA score went up. I seen where the women's stomach would go. I saw them call, they just do yeah. work in the miraculous, raising the dead. And so he asked him, how come you guys work so heavily in miracles. He said, because you Americans spend more time on what you want to preach. Wow. While we spend more time in prayer. Yeah. And because we spend more time in prayer, God smears himself on us. Yeah. And when God smears himself on us, see, even in the natural, <laughs> let me say this, and don't y'all do they don't, don't get icky on me. But even in the natural, this morning, I, I I had my grandbaby, and and before I went to work, she was just getting ready for work, and she wanted to get in my lap and embrace her granddaddy. She get, she has a special name for me. I, I don't understand. It's in another tongue. It's called baby tongue. But when she hugged me, I had to go ahead and put my shoes on, and I put her in her grandmother's big pants. I go to your grandmother. I gotta go to work. And when I did that, her grandmother says, you smell just like your granddaddy. <laughs> now the reason why she smelled like me is because she was in my lap embracing me. And so the African prophets spend time with God. Y'all yeah. not hear what I'm saying. Yeah. So they smell like God yeah. because they've been in his presence. Yeah. And so the enemy can smell what you're cooking. Yeah. There's some devils you might have to cast out because you show yeah. up. This is why Paul can lay hands on a handkerchief. And the handkerchief and folk demons would be cast out. Oh, y'all not hear me. Because the anointing that was on him got on the handkerchief. Yeah. So he says to Timothy, because I've laid hands on you, my smell is still on you. Yeah. Y'all not hear me. And so yeah. if you spend time with God, you will begin to smell like God. Your bills will hear that you smell like God. Yeah. Your health will hear and see that I smell God. I can't stay here. Yeah. There's, there's a different fragrance in here. Yeah. And so we have to stir up that gift that's in us and move by the power, not by fear, by power. Understand that. Fear is there to trump your power, to make sure you don't know who you are. The reason why the lion is the most powerful in the jungle it's not because he's the strongest. 
There are other animals that are stronger. It's because of his mindset. It's because he walks in power and he thinks different. Big as that elephant is, if he'd fight hard enough, he'd stomp him out. But, but the, when the elephant sees the lion, he says, I'm scared and I'm about to get the heck out of here. But when the lion sees the elephant, he says, lunch. It's a difference, it's yeah. mindset. Your mindset has to be different. You are a saint of God. You shall judge the world. You shall judge angels. You have power. You are the redeemed of the Lord. You have the power to cast out every devil. You have that power. You are God's masterpiece. And the enemy wants to trick you and make you think that you're powerless when you are powerful. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but has given us power. Of love and of a sound mind. Paul says, stir up the gift. Let's stir the gift up. Yeah. Let's get those, let's work those flames up. They're still in there. But they're dying out. They're dying out in the room getting cold. The room is getting the temperature is changing, but you gotta say, no, let's turn the heat up. Let's turn this prayer up. Instead of praying one time, let me pray three times. How about praying all day? You gotta be a lot of words. How about just seeking God till your mouth get dry? I'm just saying, pray until something happens. The gift is there. Stir it up. You have the power to do it. Lay your hands on yourself. Lay your hands on your own self. You wait on somebody. Lay, lay your hands on yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had somebody who was praying for themselves. They said, Lord, you told me my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Now heal your body. Heal your temple. That's what you said. Heal your temple. And you can, and God did it. Amen. God did it. God bless you tonight. I hope you were blessed tonight. Listen, if you're not at church somewhere Sunday, you need to be here. This is a great place to celebrate Mother's Day. We got some gifts for the mothers and some things we want to celebrate the mothers. I, I, my mother was my very best friend. First friend I had was my mother. And uh, I would talk to her all the time. She was uh, always tell me the truth. I could always count on her to tell the truth. She would never lie. I asked my mom, could I sing? She said, no, nope, you can't. It was, and it's still true today. And so <clears throat> she would never tell a lie. And so I, 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 mothers are to be valued. I say mothers have a murdering son, but be in the courtroom sitting there with their sons. Celebrate us with us, 1060 Chambers Road here, basically we'll start here with uh, brunch, it'll be Mother's Day brunch, um, and we'll have a special um, impartation for the mothers at 10.30 a.m. Here's Sunday at 1060 Chambers, you're celebrating the Lord, the Lord has a table-made word for you this Sunday, uh, and we're getting ready to celebrate, a lot of great things are coming up, uh, to to uh, be a blessing to the community. Share, like this video. Uh, it'll be in YouTube form if you can. Share it with somebody. And if you'd like to be a member of our church, it's easy. You can come visit and we'll take you in virtually. As a matter of fact, uh, you can go on our page, Basic Fellowship. You can message me and and I'll message you and I'll give you some word and we'll take you in right there. I don't care. We do what we got to do uh, to be a blessing and to harvest those souls that God has uh, put us in, uh, in charge of. Glory to the name of God. Father, I thank you tonight for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and how you've been wonderful to us. I give you glory and I bless your name, Lord. I pray tonight that you bless your people. But the word was spoken tonight, fester up in the spirit of the people that they would stir up the gifts that's in them that they would begin to move and do the things that you called them to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Listen, before we shut down, I'm going to say bye to you. But if you'd like to sow a seed tonight, you can. We definitely have some obligations here for our ministry. Uh, we we don't want a club. This is not the Rotary Club. This is not the Country Club. Uh, but this is a place. And just like you have bills, that we have bills. So we ask if you were sold tonight, uh, 
dollar sign C Daisy to be a blessing uh, uh, to the ministry. God bless you. Thank you and hope to see you soon.